Hello. Hi. Oh my god. You guys all came at once. Hey guys, we will be your regular dose of positive vibes online. Please subscribe. Good morning, Mabu High Squad. How are you doing? Did you sleep well? I hope so. Guys, welcome to another vlog. It is currently 5 a.m. and as usual, I'm the first one up. Um, everybody's asleep. See? Listen to those. Listen to the crickets. Um, this usually happens. I wake up. I'm the only one awake. Um, and I enjoy coffee in silence. But I have a ritual. I open these drapes. They're automated. Actually, we have to... I'm gonna talk to our smart team to automate this, to open every morning at 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. Because I like to see the sunrise in the morning. Got my coffee here. And all is set. Ooh. Ah, so good. You know, guys, it's getting cold now. I feel it. Like, stepping out of the bedroom. Uh, it's air-conditioned, our bedroom. And usually, when I step out into the rest of the home, it's really warm. Um, and I really feel it. Going from a cold room to no air conditioning, it's usually hot. But around this time of the year, it starts to get cooler in the Philippines. And like, I'm feeling a little chilly. <laughs> I wonder what the temperature is. Okay, so it's 21 degrees according to here, which is cold for Philippines. 21 degrees Celsius. For those of you in Toronto and, well, for those of you abroad in the US, 21 degrees is like hot. That's summer weather usually, right? And I wonder, like, if it's so hot in Canada, 21 degrees Celsius, why is it cold here? But after thinking about it for a while, it's kind of like, you know when you take a hot shower and your body like acclimates to that hot temperature and it feels good? and it becomes the new like standard for your body. Like you, your body recalibrates to get used to that heat. As soon as you step out of the shower, it's freezing, right? Even though it's not technically cold, it's just cold because your body recalibrated to like that, it adapted to that warm temperature. That's what it's like here in the Philippines. So for those of us who live here, as soon as it drops to 21, we're like, Whoa, cold. It's like stepping out of a hot shower. Um, and I feel this more and more, like when we come from abroad, like when we come back from US or Canada, um, from a trip after a while, we get used to the temperature there and then we come back here, always the first two days are like so hot. And then our body recalibrates to the temperature here. The body is such an interesting thing. So guys, today happens to be Halloween. Um, and as you might have seen in the last vlog, we had these prepared. We bought candy and they were placed into these bags. We'll be giving these out. Apparently kids have started to come visit our home, like just kids from the subdivision. So this year we're gonna give them some nice bags. Guys, there's my dad. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Look, we just it's got and, uh, fresh pandesal. Yeah, mm. Filipino bread and, rolls. And fruits. I cannot ask fruits. more for this. Yeah. Oh. He's putting cream cheese in it. Oh, and this is um natural cream cheese. Yeah. Nice. Guys, it's piping hot directly from the Filipino <laughs> corner bakery. And it's got malunga in it and cheese. Oh, it's the best when it's fresh from the bakery, guys. Seriously. I'm having a little bit of brown pasta with um, salmon. Hey, guys. Pandesal with pasta. Oh, so good. Oh, my gosh. Mm, you should smell this. The Filipino way. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Guys, my dad is running laps in the house. Very smart. I don't know why I'm like running down the street when I could just do laps around the, around the house. 
so healthy. There's architect Roald. They're trying to fit glass um, for the spacing here because for the longest time, for years actually, since we've had these stairs, I have been paranoid of my dogs, especially Cypher, like falling through the spaces. And Cypher will like totally sleep on the edge there and it like gives me a heart attack every time. Um, and then he'll also come running down and peek through the space to see like who's on the first floor. So <laughs> we're gonna finally do something about it. Um, they're going to secure glass in all the spaces, see? Which is great. So they're just fitting it right now. But I think this is a very good idea. Something we should have done from the start. Um, and because it's glass, we'll be able to see through it and light can still shine through. So it still has that open, airy feel, but it's a lot safer. And the painting continues. So they've, well, our curtains are wrapped up. The artwork is wrapped up and they're starting to repaint the walls. Uh, they're gonna eventually do this side as well. Major work, guys. This wall has been completely painted now. That wall as well, it looks brand new. So beautiful, see? It's a gorgeous, gorgeous cream color. I love it. As for all the art on the walls, for now, we are keeping it in the Joseph room. All the artwork is here. This, by the way, is the Joseph room, inspired by my brother. Um, see, it's all here, laid out, just waiting to be placed back. Oh my gosh, guys, trick-or-treaters are here. They're so cute. And guys, it's only 3 p.m. Hi, guys. They're so cute. Wait, we're gonna bring candy. I love it. Yay, our first trick-or-treaters. <laughs> Hi, happy Halloween. <laughs> Bye, guys. Enjoy. That is so cute. I never would have imagined we would do the trick-or-treating tradition here in the Philippines. Guys, this is new. Like, it's... When I first moved here, trick-or-treating was not really a thing. Some kids would do it at the mall, some people in subdivisions, but now it's really starting to be adapted as, you know, a yearly tradition here, which is so cool. Oh no, guys, it is raining. Oh no, so trick-or-treaters really have to bring an umbrella. Oh no, it is raining a lot. Like, really hard. Oh boy. I guess this is one of the challenges of trick-or-treating in the Philippines at this time of the year. I'm so excited about this trick-or-treating thing. And you know what? I just realized I've become one of those like uber excited parents at trick-or-treating time. You know, like the moms who would rush to the door and be like, Oh, your costume is so cute. Here you go. And then like go back into the kitchen and have my wine. I've turned into one of those ladies. But guys, Check out the parrots. They are loving the rain. Look at the blue naped. I think that's Marcelo sitting out in the rain. He loves when it rains. All the birds do. See? The blue napes love sitting in the rain. It looks like the crimson belly conures though um, don't like it today. <laughs> they want to stay dry. Yay, it stopped raining. So I guess the kids are trick or treating now. Oh, and they're smart. They're coming with all their parents and their cars. <laughs> How cute. Holy, there's a huge group. Holy, it's like a whole classroom. You see that? Oh, my windows are like fogged. Wait. Oh my gosh, there's like a whole school. Hi. Oh my. There's music and everything, a huge parade. Oh my goodness. Oh, we didn't pack enough. Hi guys! Hello! Hi! Oh my god! You guys all came at once! Hi! Yes, we can take pictures! Hi! Oh my god! Hi guys! Oh! It's like a whole caravan! Oh! Is this a school? Oh my gosh! Hi guys! Okay, yeah, yeah! 
Thank you guys, happy Halloween! Oh my gosh, we don't have enough! Oh my gosh, guys, look at all these people! This is the craziest trick or treat I've ever been to! Hi, oh you guys are so cute! Yes, sure! Happy Halloween! Happy Halloween! Yes! Oh my gosh! I love your costume! <laughs> That's a hilarious costume! <laughs> Hi guys! Oh, I hope we gave enough candy! Yes! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh. You wanna come in? <laughs> Oh my goodness, this is hilarious. Yes. Oh my gosh, love you too. Yes, of course. Good morning, Mabuhai Squad. How are you doing? Did you sleep well? I hope so. Guys, yesterday was crazy. Wow. Um, I cannot believe how many kids showed up. And all in one, like, huge like bunch that is really amazing um that really made my halloween i don't ever recall halloween being that celebratory in canada i mean when i was young i would say in the maybe the 90s there was a point when there were a lot of kids you know s swarming the doors uh, of the homes in my neighborhood but not like that <laughs> they had a whole caravan, also a huge truck blasting like Ghostbusters. <laughs> that was so awesome. I really love this neighborhood uh, and this whole area. Everyone is really festive, even Christmas time. Do you guys remember last Christmas? There was a whole chore- like the carolers came to our gate and there was a whole choreography. They did choreography, guys. Um, and that's the Philippines cheer for you. Um, yeah, that was a lot, a lot of fun. And, you know, going back to what I said about uh, not ever remembering Canada being that, like, like that. Um, because last year, a total of five kids came to our door. Five! Only five kids! I'm like, where's all the Halloween spirit? Um... But, one of you Mabuhai Squad left a comment in our last vlog that, um, that is true. And that is that neighborhoods are aging. Um, so, like, my neighborhood in Canada, you guys have seen my Toronto vlogs. It's an older neighborhood now. We moved there in 1989 when I was a kid still. Um, and there were a ton of kids back then, um, but the home, the homeowners back then were like parents, right? So, you know, all, me and all the neighborhood kids would go out, we would, we would bike around the neighborhood, we would trick or treat, and there were a lot of us, but then we all grew up. And our parents stayed in those houses, so... Then it occurred to me that OMG, like, neighborhoods, assuming there isn't, like, apartment buildings and stuff, which have a fast turnover because it's, like, usually renters, but a neighborhood full of homes, houses, uh, can age. And that there's often a, like, golden years of kids. Like, a golden era when there are actually kids in the neighborhood. <gasps> That made me feel a bit nostalgic and a bit sad, <laughs> somehow. Um, that neighborhoods, you know, can have a golden era of kids. And that, you know, th that even neighborhoods can age. Anyways, that explains why over the years there have been less and less 
Halloween trick-or-treaters in our home in Canada. How about you guys, where you live? Are there a lot of trick-or-treaters? Where you live, is it like that? <laughs> what we had? I wonder. Anyways, let's have coffee. So guys, lately, I've kind of been obsessed with this. <laughs> um, this is Nespresso, by the way, hashtag not sponsored. And it was introduced to us by Edmark and Nika, our cousins. And, you know, as a coffee guy, I love freshly ground. Like, see, this is like ground coffee my dad brought. I usually won't even take this. I prefer freshly ground like this, like actual beans. This here's Amare coffee, uh, also from Edmark. Because when you freshly grind the beans, it smells so good. The aroma is part of the experience of having coffee. And then freshly ground goes either here or it goes into the, the French press, which is what I usually do, the French press. Um, but the problem is I wake up really, really early and I get my hot water from here. Now this is our uh, XYN machine. It's like an ultra water filter. Er. <laughs> and um, it's also smart. So it'll turn off at night. When the lights are off and nobody's around, there's like a motion sensor right here. When it knows people are sleeping, it'll shut off. But then in the morning, when I turn on the lights and I come around, it'll sense that I'm here and it'll start to heat the water. So because it turns off, it takes a good like three or four minutes to heat the water. Um, so I gotta wait. I can't have coffee right away, which is probably healthier anyways. But lately, I've been doing this. It's like instant. I don't gotta wait for the water to heat. So I've been <laughs> drinking this. And you know what? It's really good. So these coffees, these are the pods. Uh, they don't have the same aroma as freshly ground coffee beans, but in terms of taste and in terms of caffeine quality, pretty good. We bought, there are tons of different flavors, guys, but we have three here. This is the strongest right here. I forgot what it's called. And then these are like medium and less. It's really for our guests and my dad drinks it too. But yeah, I've been obsessed. How about you guys? Do you guys like instant coffee like this? I used to kind of be against Keurig and like things like this because of the fact that it's it's almost like prepackaged and you don't get the joy of grinding the beans and stuff. And again, the aroma, but yeah, it's getting better. And you know what? I think they're cracking the code soon. They'll be able to get the that aroma in these pods as well soon. Anyways, do you guys do instant coffee like this? So guys, to our surprise, we actually made enough candy bags for the kids. We, we even had extra, like see this here. This is an extra baggie. I'm glad, I'm, I, cause when I saw the crowd, I'm like, oops, we did not pack enough. So I looked it up guys, these are not um, recyclable, but they are reusable bags. So kids can use them for school and all that. All right guys, so I just got back from the gym and it is a beautiful day. <gasps> Sun's out. Awesome. Love, look at the pool guys. Ooh, what a gorgeous, gorgeous day. The pool is calling. See that? <gasps> Love. Honestly, you know what? If I was still drinking, this would be an awesome beer day. Just to hang out by the pool all day and drink beer and eat. Enjoy the sun. But not today because I've got to work. The next Ants Canada video is due, yes, uh, this weekend. And I missed last week's episode. Um, so this week, can't wait to upload a new video. I know the AC family has been eager to get a new episode and update on Pandora. So guys, check this out. I found a new way to offer our lizards crickets. So I created this contraption, which is basically a bucket with all the crickets inside. Now the bucket is white, so the crickets really stand out, you see? 
and it's slightly tilted and it's right beside the branch so the lizard can just come down from wherever they are. I think one's up there and it sees the crickets. Well, it saw the crickets. It's right there, see it on the edge? It's looking. So at any time it can come down. These birds too, if they want to eat the crickets, they can, but mostly the lizards will eat this. All right, let's see. It's peeking at it right now. This is such an easier way to do it. I'll back away, go ahead. Go, 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 those crickets are for you. Guys, there's one of the lizards. This is the male. Oh man, he's so big. <gasps> he's so much bigger now than when I first put him in. He's going across. I wonder if he knows that there are crickets in there. The female is up there. She's moving, she's moving towards the bucket. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Look at her. These lizards are so smart. Whoa. Go on. I know you want those crickets. Go, go, go. Come on. Don't be scared. She's looking down at them. She sees them. The bucket is right there. All right, there's the male. He's getting closer to the bucket. Female is now right there. All right, guys, this is the test. If she crawls down, then our plan worked. And this will actually be the first time I've ever seen these sailfin dragons eat. Now, we've just been offering them crickets and superworms in a bowl, all the way at ground level, all the way down there. But I've never actually seen them eat. Oh, there's the male. I think he's looking at the bucket. Oh my gosh, he's so smart. He is so smart. He's gonna check out the bucket. He understands the concept that when we bring in as a receptacle, that food is inside. Oh, how awesome. He sees the crickets through the plastic, but he won't be able to get at them unless he goes to the top. Yay! Bingo. Go inside, go. <laughs> No! Is he going after them or no? Okay, he's looking inside the bucket. What is he doing? <gasps> he just wants to bask? I guess he's full. I mean, look at his belly. It's so big. Go ahead, eat the crickets. He's looking into the bucket. Come on, buddy. I know you want it. Oh, I guess not. He must have had a, a lot of vegetables. We've been giving them leafy greens and stuff. These lizards are omnivorous. They eat both plants and insects. He keeps looking into the bucket, but I don't think he's hungry. Okay, female is not going down either. So guys, speaking of Ants Canada, this here is our very own Lady Deathstrike. It's our limited edition plush. We're gonna start, hopefully, to create a series of plush toys of popular characters from my Ants Canada channel. And just yesterday, Halloween, this Lady Deathstrike plush toy, which we've been working on for months, uh, to make it cute. It finally launched yesterday on the site. So guys, um, again, it is limited edition and it's a collector's item for the fans of the Pandora series, my ecosystem vivarium series on the Ants Canada channel. And uh, go, we ship worldwide, limited stock, so I don't think we'll be ordering more. Go pick up your Lady Deathstrike. It's the first of our plushie series, which we call the AC Fuzzies series. See? And... This little card opens up and it says, Hi, I am Lady Deathstrike, a giant huntsman spider from Pandora. I have given birth to two egg sacs and am a fierce mother. Please care for me, but be careful, I bite. See? And then it's got a little bit of trivia, educational stuff here on uh, <clears throat> huntsmans. It's awesome. I love this. It's just my favorite. And then look, our team and I made sure to 
have this egg sac be detachable in case people wanted just the spider. Cute, right? I love it. So guys, get yours now at antscanada.com. All right, guys. So here in the bedroom, today, November 1st, happens to be a holiday here in the Philippines because um, it's actually a very big holiday. And we celebrate All Souls and All Saints Day in Canada as well, I believe US. Um, but here in the Philippines, it's a pretty big deal. So everyone usually goes to their home province and they visit a cemetery and they stay there. They camp out um, to, you know, pray and pay tribute and remember their loved ones. So All Souls Day, all the souls that have gone to heaven, people who have passed away. So on this day, of course, I'm thinking of all the people we've lost this year. Um, for those of you who saw our last vlog, um, you'll know that our good friend Dingo Dinkelman uh, from South Africa, who has been here at our place, well, they visited the Philippines for three weeks, and two of those weeks they stayed with us. And we just got so close to them. We got to know them on a personal level. We considered them family. And sadly, Dingo passed away, um, battling a snake bite by a green mamba snake, which is a highly venomous snake. And like I said, he had some really big dreams and had so much love for his family. It's just really tragic. But today, I'm remembering Dingo. I'm also remembering Brian Barczyk, another animal creator friend of ours who passed away earlier this year, a pioneer in the animal influencer space. Um, and as well, my Tita Ching, um, who I'm sure I might have shown in the vlogs in the past. I'm not sure though, um, but she passed away just in October, or was it October or the begin last the end of September? Um, but we attended her funeral in Toronto, you guys remember that? And it's just, man, all the people who've passed, and animals that have passed. This year we also lost Melody our farm cat who was just like a wild cat that we adopted and lived outside she passed away from um, a, a kidney or liver complication according to the vet and then um, also just last week we lost our longtime pet goat Billy we've had him for so many years he was actually our first farm animal uh, you know to live here even before RJ and I moved here and our house was done Billy was living here on this property. Melody and Billy together were really our first like animals guarding the property before we actually moved here. So I'm remembering their souls as well. I know growing up, according to Catholicism, animals do not have immortal souls. But I, I feel I don't want I don't want to believe that. I feel like they do have souls and spirits and then they just keep reincarnating as different animals or as the same animal over and over again it's all energy we all go to the same place that's what i believe so today for all souls day i'm just really thinking about all our loved ones who've passed all my grandparents who have passed i remember my dad's parents growing up my mom's parents not so much they were in the philippines apparently when i was one years old i met my grandfather here in the Philippines when I was a baby, when I was a one-year-old baby. Do not remember that. But I remember them, past aunts and uncles who passed away, friends who passed away. It's just crazy because now that I'm in my 40s, right? Like, more and more I'm seeing people around me crossing over to the other side. And it's such a weird feeling. Like, when you're young, death is not so common. I suppose, well, maybe from a place of privilege where I grew up in Canada, I didn't personally experience that much death. Like there was one kid in my school who had leukemia and he passed away. And then like my uncle and both two grandparents passed away, but that's it. But the more you grow up, the more people start passing away and it's so painful. And I don't know, it's hard to explain. It's almost like it's a reminder every time someone passes away that we are also getting close to that place. In the last vlog, I talked about the ability to live forever because Biotech Now, 
coming up with ways to anti-age and to reverse age. Isn't that crazy? Would you want to live forever, guys? Why are you barking? And I bet there will be ways to also give this anti-aging tech to our pets, to dogs. Can you imagine if dogs can live forever? Okay. I don't know if I, I don't know if I can handle this kind of barking forever though. <laughs> That's Eilish. They're leading Eilish to uh, a field to graze. <laughs> so sad. She's been crying every day. Um, she misses Billy for sure. And we are going to get more goats. I actually love this corner view of the property. You know, I could see the farm side. I could see the front of our home. Cars drive by. You know, I was thinking maybe one day we will create a balcony like this whole window we can rip out and add like some kind of glass door and then a balcony that walks out through this way because like this is quite a ledge here we could just extend it just a little bit and like have a nice place to sit outside what do you guys think wouldn't that be cute guys this is called deruman deruman deruman, deruman in pangasinan yeah. where rj's from his province Look at it. It's black glutinous rice. Black glutinous rice. Oh wow. This is very popular there. It kind of looks like um, suman-ish. It's better. But it's black. Like the rice is black. Mm -hmm. And I see pieces of coconut. Yeah. Oh. So guys, apparently he says this is a custom to eat this uh, for all Souls Day today. <gasps> In Pangasinan. In Pangasinan. Okay. Oh, it just scoops out like this, like it's like a porridge. Look at it. It's oh. sweet. Perfect. I just came back from the gym. Let's replace our glycogen stores. Mm. Oh, a oh, hot. Mmm. 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 Isn't that the regular good in this rice? Mmm. Guys, it's sweet, but it's a. Mm, it's like coconut sweet. Oh my gosh, guys, that is delicious. <gasps> All you people from Pangasinan, you guys know that? Mmm. Guys, I thought RJ ordered this. No, RJ cooked it from scratch. Wow, it's so good. So, what are the ingredients? Coconut and rice. Brown sugar? Brown sugar. And what else? Yeah, shaved coconut. How interesting. I'm gonna have more. We're gonna chop this up and give it to all our staff and workers and stuff. Everyone needs to taste this. What's up, my Buhai squad? So, <laughs> I did a lot of work and I pretty much finished what I had to do today. So I decided, you know, I am gonna swim. It's sunset now. Sun is gonna set in maybe an hour or so. And it is beautiful out here. Ah, But I wanted to show you this. See this, these two palm trees? Look, it's a new stalk and it's huge. That spike coming out will be a new like bunch of leaves for this palm tree. This palm tree is doing so well. It's so big now. Like I think from here on in, it's really gonna just explode now. The one beside it, its best friend, also sending out a spike and right on top of it is this beautiful red dragonfly that spike will unfurl and become also a leaf uh one of the these like is this a branch or a frond what's that called anyway it'll become its own palm um and i'm so happy these are doing well there are also palm trees on this side also doing quite well these two are doing well See, another spike. Yes! It's been a good rainy season. So, these palm trees are doing okay. This palm tree actually replaced another palm tree which died. So, the, the original palm tree in this spot did not make it for some reason. And this is a new one. And it's been wrapped up. When you plant a palm tree, you have to wrap it up apparently for a while until it like establishes. But it doesn't look like it's establishing that well. I mean, I hope it does. There must be something about that spot, maybe? Anyways, I really hope it 
it un it grows and establishes well. Um, it's been a huge dream of mine, guys, to have palm trees, specifically by the pool. But just to have palm trees for years. I think in my twenties, I like dreamed of you know one day, I would like to have palm trees growing in pots, and then in my in my mind, I would have brought it indoors or put it in like a greenhouse on my property or something. Um, that was back when I used to dream about you know having a house in Canada, and there they are, my dream palm trees, yay! Speaking of dreams and manifesting. So um, when I'm in this pool, I use it as my prayer time because like it's so peaceful and quiet and surrounded by nature, right? Um, and when it's like this, I find it's like, I like sense God, the higher power the most when I'm in nature. And then I'll also get little like, little messages from nature in response to my like prayers and and my affirmations and right um i don't know it's really strange hard to explain one of the things that i will say when i'm in the pool that i learned from abraham hicks do you know abraham hicks teacher of law of attraction um is i will look up into the sky and i will imagine the creator like the maker of everything right and I will imagine that like the sky is like this veil and beyond this veil, way out there, like infinitely out there, is the creator looking down at me and I am talking to the creator like a baby talks to its mother. And then I'll say something like, you know what I want, give it to me the quickest way possible Give it to me through the path of least resistance. Give it to me any way I can have it. And I say that over and over and over again. And I feel the words. And when I say, you know what I want, it's like the creator knows what's best, what I want, right? Because I'm afraid that if I were to specifically say something, like for example, when I was younger, I wanted to be a veterinarian, right? <laughs> And so if I were to have said, Lord, make me a veterinarian, I don't know now at this point in my life if being a veterinarian would have been as fulfilling for me personally, sorry for any vets out there, not to discredit the career, but I personally would prefer doing what I do now. And there is no way I would have been able to dream and fathom being a YouTuber, right? Working with ants and animals on the internet, being an actor and a singer, like, you know what I mean? Like, I get to do so much stuff. It's like the universe gave me an even better plan than I could have ever dreamed. So this is what I'm, I mean. When I, when I look up into the sky and I ask the creator, I say, oh, universe, Lord, what, whoever you address, the higher power, you know what I want. Like, you know what would fill my heart with joy and make me feel the most alive. You know, like, it's beyond anything I can dream of. In the, in the 90s and 2000s, I could have never imagined the internet, blah, 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 all of this. It didn't exist back then, right? So, yeah, this is what I mean. So, guys, say it with me. Close your eyes and imagine you're looking right into the eyes of the, your creator and you're saying you know what I want give it to me the quickest way possible give it to me through the path of least resistance and give it to me any way I can ha have it through the path of least, least resistance meaning like the easiest way give it to me in the easiest way the way that hurts the least <laughs> where I struggle the least Quickest way, give it to me ASAP. Let's not drag it on. <laughs> and then any way I can have it. Give it to me any way that I can have it. I would love to be a performer. Fine, I'm not doing world tours like Taylor Swift, 
but I am uploading viral videos of me singing and entertaining people, performing for millions of views, right? I'm still happy that way. <laughs> and by the way, we did do a world tour. Anyway, I hope this helps you manifest things. And if it does, let me know in the comments in a future vlog. <laughs> ah, I love this pool. Okay guys, so we're lighting candles for All Souls Day. Sahara's watching. Rizal, no. Rizal's ease. Out of there. So we're just putting the candles um, into these like candle bases. And now we're placing the candles all around the home. See? Candles there, candle there. Candle here. Good morning, Mabu High Squad. How are you doing? Did you sleep well? I hope so. Having my morning coffee and lots of work in the house still. Painting ongoing. Hi, Daddy. Daddy, do you have the joke of the day? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Actually, I got two. One for Halloween and one for uh, All Saints Day. Okay, guys, a twofer. Let's, let's go for All Saints Day. Okay, All Saints Day. How do the ghost stay on shape? How does the ghost stay? Ghost. ghost. How does the ghost stay in shape? How? They. Exorcise. <laughs> <laughs> That's also a Halloween one. Okay. Halloween. Why the Jack Lantern wants to play poker with a pumpkin? Why does a Jack O' Lantern want to play jo poker with a pumpkin? pumpkin? Why? Why? It's impossible to read their faces. <laughs> what? <laughs> Faces of those pumpkins. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm not sure if I got. Did you guys get that? It's just funny. The delivery is funny. <laughs> Thanks, Daddy. All right, guys. So, gonna continue doing work here, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend and life out there. Hope you all had a fun and safe Halloween and All Souls Day. And guys, it really means a lot to us that you are joining us on this journey called life. Um, I really love you guys so much and we appreciate all of your support. We read all of your comments, even if we aren't able to respond to all of them. Thank you so much. You guys are like our family. So if you enjoyed today's vlog, be sure to hit the like button as it really helps us a lot. It lets YouTube know that our vlogs are worth sharing to new audiences. And I know you guys have been doing that. Thank you so, so much. And if you haven't yet, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Come join our Mabuhai squad because we will be your regular dose of positive vibes online. I'll see you guys in the next vlog. Bye. Mm -hmm.